Hey folks, welcome. Today we're going to be looking at making trails and RGB trails inside a touch designer. And we're going to be leaning really heavily into the cache top. Now I know a lot of folks when they think about trails, they often go to feedback. And feedback is a great way to make trails, but I find especially when you want really crisp, almost copies of whatever is on screen, that method ends up being way more effort than it's worth. And using a cache top and the cache select top will get you a lot better results. So let's go ahead and just delete everything in this network and rebuild this together. So the first thing I'm going to need is a movie file in top as my source. And in this case, we'll start with the banana and I'll just have the banana kind of move back and forth on the screen and rotate a little bit. So I'll create a transform top after that. And then I'll make an LFO chop that I'm going to use for my translate position here. So I'll put a null chop after this. And then I'll go ahead and reference this value on my transform. And we can see it's moving way too quickly and going way off the screen. So the first thing we can do is slow this down a bit by turning down the frequency of the LFO. And then also I'm going to rearrange this value because right now it's going off screen for most of the time. So I'll insert a math chop here. And I can see my from range is zero to one, but if you've used an LFO before, you'll know that in most cases, it's actually gonna be from negative one all the way to one. So let's go ahead and change that from range to be correct. And then we can see this is going from the middle off screen, and that's because the transform tops translate by default when it's set to fraction actually expects zero to be the middle, negative, or I guess it's this way, negative 0.5 is the left edge and positive 0.5 is the right edge. So essentially we want to take this range and change it from 0 to 1 to be from negative 0.5 to 0.5. And now we can see it's just got a nice slow motion back and forth across the screen. And the final thing I'll do is just add a little bit of rotation for fun. So on my transform top, I'm going to put ABS time with a capital T dot frame. And that way, as my absolute frame counter for how long this project has been open increases, it just progressively rotates that banana more and more. So now we have something to trail. So I really like using this effect with a cache top. I find it super helpful for so many different things. And it really just is a simple concept. We are going to create a cache with lots of frames. We're going to pick out different frames. And then what we're going to do is each one of those frames, we're going to give a different amount of delay to. And from there, we just got to find a different way that we want to composite them together. So whether we want RGB delays, we'll composite in one way. If we want them all to be solid, uh, full copies, we'll composite that in a different way. So the first step is always with the cache top. So I'm going to go ahead and plug my transform to my cache top. Now, a few tricks with the cache top, if you've never used it before, is you always want to try and keep your cache size as small as possible because that's going to be what really uses up a lot of GPU memory. So what I mean is if we look at my transform top here, what I can do is middle click on it and we can see GPU mem of this top is 3.52 megabytes, which is about how much memory you need for a 1280 by 720 texture. Now my cache top is actually holding 32 frames of this same 1280 by 720. So if I middle click on that, you can see this one even though it's 1280 by 720, the GPU mem of this top is 116 megabytes. Now, if we're working at 1280 by 720, which is a dream of mine, uh, we don't have to worry about things like GPU memory, but it's something to be aware of because as you start going up to 1080p, you know, we can even do this really quick with a fit top just as an example. If I make this 1920 by 1080, all of a sudden it's now 250 megabytes per 32 frames. If I drop this or bump this up to 4K. All of a sudden we're using one gig of our GPU memory. So you can see how this scales up very quickly. So you just want to be careful with that, especially if you're working on a laptop or something like that. Just be aware of your cache size. Now with that said, the cache size is how many frames we're holding inside of the top. And the output index here is actually which frame we're outputting. So you can always think of your cache size as being your total and then your output index is a negative number that reads backwards into the cache. So in this case, because the cache size is 32, my output index will have a range from zero 
all the way to negative 32. And you can see if I go beyond that, it really doesn't do anything because I don't have any frames out there. But from zero up until negative 32, you can see I'm adjusting the delay between these two operators. Now, in most cases, unless you're only using one cache top, I don't really recommend ever even using the output index of this. I would just leave this to zero because we have an operator that's really great called a cache select top. And what this does is it functions very much like a select top normally would or a select chop in that all it's doing is referencing something that's already inside of GPU memory. So that way you can almost consider that it's, it's a free operator to use. Now, if we use it in conjunction with the cache top, what we can do is actually select multiple different points from inside the same cache buffer. So in this case, I can take my cache, drag it onto the cache top parameter of my cache select. And then you can see I still have that same cache index that lets me basically say, okay, well, I want you know, negative 30 is my cache index, so almost at the end of that cache, and you can see it's quite delayed compared to my cache top. And the really great thing about this is how well it scales, because then what I can do is quickly make four or more copies of these, and even just middle clicking on any of them, you can see the, the cook times are very, very low. It takes zero megabytes of GPU memory, because like I was saying, it's not creating or assigning a texture itself, it's just pulling from that existing cache top's memory. So that's really great. So we could even do something like make seven of these and it would be very manageable, easy to scale on all kinds of hardware. So that's great. Now, what we want to do from here, if we wanted to make a really cool trail effect is basically just take each one of these cache selects and just offset them through that cache buffer that we have. So zero being real time, I think that's great. So then let's go to cache number two. Let's say it's minus five. So this is now going to be five frames behind the original. The next one will set to maybe negative 10 and then negative 15. And then we can go to negative 20. And don't worry if this seems like a painful process. I'll show you a shortcut in a moment. And finally, negative 30. So now you can see we have this fun wave effect going on here because they're all slightly offset from each other. And then, like I said, a lot of this really comes back down to compositing. So if we wanted to just do the quickest and dirtiest kind of trail, I'd make a composite top. I'd set this into over mode and then right click and drag all my operators and then plug them into the comp. Now you can see, bingo, bango, we've got ourselves a cool looking trail that's going on on screen. Now, before we talk about kind of RGB trails and, and separating the channels. Uh, one thing that you may want to keep in the back pocket is if you start to do this more often, you know, it becomes really annoying to have to go to each and every single one of these to offset the um, frame index. So what I like to do is often use just a tiny bit of Python. So what I could say is, okay, well, let me disconnect this one as well. So we'll just say my cache is index zero. And then what I'm going to do is go to each of my cache selects, and we'll start with the first one here, and we'll put a little Python expression. Because what we can do is use the nice feature in Touch Designer where every time I copy and paste the same operator, it increments the number on the end of the name by one. So I can almost use that like a built-in counter, multiply that against however many frames offset I want each cache select to be, and you know, just in a quick little line of Python, we're going to have that automatically scaling for us. So this is as easy as saying me.digits, which is gonna give you the number off of the end of my own operator's name. And then we're gonna multiply it by negative five. Now, remember, we have to multiply it by negative five because like we said, the index for selecting out of a cache goes in the negative direction, not in the positive direction. So in this case, all I have to do is start copying and pasting this and you can see each one that I do now it's three times negative five. Now it's four times negative five and it'll just automatically keep scaling. And you can see once it gets past that 32 value that we have here, all the frames are the same. But I could easily go to my cache top and say, hey, you know what, now I want, uh, now I want 60 frames. And now all of these are gonna have unique frames in them. All of them can be composited back on top of each other. And you got yourself quite a trippy little banana situation there. Now, if you want to get into doing these kind of trails, but you don't have the benefit of having this really nicely keyed out image with an alpha background, 
you know, let's say for example that you had something like this. You had a movie or a live camera feed and there's alpha across the whole thing and it's just movement. Now that doesn't mean we can't use trails at all because this is where some really fun tricks come in with using a reorder top and just being able to layer the RGB channels. So in this case, I'm gonna do something similar. I'm gonna set up a cache top and we'll do 30s for the cache size. And then I'm gonna grab my cache select as always. And I'm gonna go ahead and because I wanna do an RGB trail, I really only need three sets of textures here. So I'll have my R be in real time. I'll have my G being delayed by 10 frames. And then I'll have my B channel for blue being delayed by 20 frames. So I could even go back to my cache in this case. And if I was doing some good thinking, I would even set that to 20, you know, save myself the memory there. Now, if I wanted to take each one of these and combine the RGB channels in a fun way, what we can use is a reorder top. Now a reorder top in this case is a really fun operator and I think a lot of folks don't get into it because it's a little bit confusing and not intuitive to look at. So essentially what you have is an operator that will allow you to plug in four different textures and remap different channels from those textures into one single RGBA texture. So a good way to imagine that is, let's say we take our first input here. We'll take our real-time texture, plug it in to the first input, and now we're gonna see what we want to do is output red channel from this operator. We wanna grab input one's red channel. So far, so good. Now, what if we wanna take the blue channel from this one and have it be the blue channel of our new combined texture? Same process, we grab the output of the cache select, input of the reorder, and now we say, you know, for our output green, excuse me, green, not blue, we're gonna pick input two, and we're gonna grab the green channel from it. And now you can already see it's starting to stack those two different, you know, the red channel from the first input and the 10 frame delayed green channel from the second input. And similarly, we can do the same by grabbing the third input and grabbing the blue for that. And now you can see we have this kind of cool RGB, you know, delay situation going on. Now, the fourth channel you can use if you want. If you do have alpha, like if we're using the previous banana example, you could also put an alpha channel in for here and just make sure everything has a nice clean alpha. But in this case, this is a really good way that you can even get some nice trail effects going, even if you can't key out the material. So for example, if this was a webcam or a live cam at a concert, you could still very much use this technique easily and get some fun trails going on screen. So with that said, I hope that gives you two interesting ways to make some cool trails and hope you enjoy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.